Hello, my name's Hans and today at Rimmer Brothers we're going to be uh, inspecting and servicing the rear brakes on this TR6. We've already raised the vehicle up with the ramp jack and we need to undo, undo this wheel. This is clockwise to undo, so we're going to use the ma mallets provided and gently tap it around. As you can see, these have been ground down and punched, so we're going to use the impact driver to remove them. We shall replace the studs and nuts when we put it all back together. Once we removed the splined hub, we have two screws, flat blade to remove. And that one's come off quite easily. As you can see, our drum came off quite easily, but if it doesn't, you may have a, a rust build up on this edge or a bit of wear on the inside of the drum. In this case, you'll need to slacken off the adjuster at the bottom. I'm using a, a brake adjusting tool and it goes on a square head and you should be able to turn it and that will actually bring the shoes close in together and that will help you pull the drum off easily. To remove the brake shoes we have these clips and pins, we just need to compress them in holding the pin at the back and then as you can see, withdraw them like so. Doing the same with the other one, just need to compress it. Reverse things. That are. To remove the shoes now, I'm just going to use some small pipe grips to grip the shoe. Undo the lower part. And then release the springs. Note which way the springs go and which way the uh, pads fit. Place them like they are fitted and you should be able to refit them the same way. To remove the brake cylinder we need to uh, First of all, make sure that the bleed nipple hasn't uh, seized in so we can bleed it afterwards. And that's absolutely fine. Next we need to see the brake pipe union's okay. Oh, yes, that's come loose lovely. So before we undo that anymore, we're going to uh, clamp up the brake pipe using this brake pipe tool. That will stop any fluid loss. So I'm just going to clamp on the flexible hose and when we undo this we shouldn't have any fluid loss. We now need to remove these clips on the back. The outer one slides forward. Now we need to undo the handbrake cable. Removing the handbrake cable we just need to uh, remove the split pit at the bottom. Oh. Try not to lose the washer that dropped off and remove the clevis pin. To remove the uh, wheel cylinder, we first need to remove this handbrake quadrant. 
we can pull it out like that. Then there's another plate at the back that needs to be slid forwards. That's the plate holding it at the back. And we've removed it. We could now service it or replace it, whichever needs to be done. Now we've removed the uh, wheel cylinder, we need to make sure that it's all in good condition. Visually it looks okay. We haven't damaged the threads on the brake pipe. We know that the brake nipple has actually come loose and there's no damage to any of the threads. Just need to make sure that the piston and the seals are okay. <coughs> so we're going to carefully remove this clip. And now we need to pull off the dust cover. As we can see, there's hardly any corrosion, in fact none. And if we pull it out, we can feel that the actual <coughs> seal is in perfect condition. We shall clean all that out and refit it. Right, we're going to reassemble the wheel cylinder. Um, we've had it stripped apart, we've cleaned it. And as you can see, the bores are absolutely perfect, despite all the years of being sat there. But this I'm sure is due to the fact it's had silicon brake fluid. No moisture has got in, corroded any of the aluminium. The seals are perfect. I mean, that's the piston that's been in there for how many years? I, give, I don't know, but uh, quite a fair while. But this is in really good condition and there's no point replacing it. If there was any reason to replace it, I would do without hesitation. So we're going to uh, lubricate it with some of this uh, special brake fluid. Gently insert it back in the cylinder. You'll know when it's scented. And it only needs a bit of gentle persuasion. Down it goes. The dust seal is in perfect condition, no splits or tears, so we're going to uh, refit that back over. And that's it, one wheel cylinder fully rebuilt. To replace the wheel cylinder, we're going to uh, pop it through the hole and just screw it into the metal brake pipe. Next job is this special clip here. This goes on first and the other two packing pieces go in behind it. It's quite fiddly to put in. That's the next piece. That goes up against the back of this back plate. Next job is to fit this quadrant. And then lastly, we have one more piece. And that slides in, in between the two pieces and it will clip into there. We've heard it click into position and that's lovely and snug and slides backwards and forwards. Job done. Just need to replace the uh, little rubber seal at the back. As you can see, these are old riveted on handbrake shoes, the linings, they're not cubbied away. 
If there were glued on ones I would replace them because over time corrosion gets in between the linings and the back plate and they peel off. But these are in very good condition, the springs are perfect. We're going to go and put it back just the way it came off. So first of all, make life easier and unhook, unhook one of the springs. Always a bit fiddly doing these. We've checked the handbrake adjuster. That's absolutely in perfect condition. All we need to do is to put the little clevis pins and clips on. That's one done. Just need to put the clevis pin, the new split pin in for the handbrake cable. We need to replace the handbrake cable. Going to fit the pin in and then there's a washer at the bottom. And we have a new split bin. Job done. Before fitting the uh, drum back, we're going to give it a really good clean. As you can see, it's in really good condition. No wear, no scoring, no rust build up on the edge here. This is coming up lovely and shiny. <laughs> Careful not to breathe in the dust and We might have to undo the brake adjuster at the back if it's difficult to get the drum back on. Now we put the screws back in, we need to adjust the little adjuster at the back. Make sure that the shoes are actually in position. Normally tighten up the adjuster until the uh, shoes lock up. Yep, that's tight. And if we undo it, you'll know when it's just right because it starts to let go. That's absolutely fine. Might need to adjust it once they've bedded in a little bit. Now we put this all back together, we can bleed the brakes. I'm going to make sure that the brake pipe has been tightened. And then we're going to release the clamp on the brake hose. And some kind of person is going to pump the brake pedal until we get fluid out of here. Once we've got fluid and air bubbles coming out, we can retighten the bleed dipple. Also, a little dust cap goes on the top. Now we've finished doing the brakes, we can fit the hub straight forward. And I'm going to lock tight the threads, tighten up the new nuts, and then refit the wheel. Before we fit the wheel, it's important that we trim the wheel studs. And here's a little piece that I've chopped off. As you can see, 
It's extremely small. But it's important we don't have anything protruding there that will catch on the actual hub of the wheel when we refit it onto the splines. The wheel needs to fit on this bit here and not touch this bit at all. So now we've tightened those up to 80 pounds per foot. We've locked tightened them in, ground them down. We could now replace the wheel. If they need a little bit of grease on there, you can put a little bit, but don't overdo it. Make note which way this undoes. Make sure you tighten it up accordingly. This is the left hand thread. And when we tighten it up, it's always on the bit that's not straight towards the middle of the actual hub. So we tighten it up on this side. Gently keep tapping until it stops turning. And after about 50 miles, we'll recheck it again. That's the job done.